everybody, Tai Chi Twins here. My name is Jeremy Rorty. And I'm Josh Rorty. Welcome to another episode where we're talking about using items that you carry with you every day as an improvised self-defense tool. Today, we're talking about using what's in your pockets. So first thing I want to point out is we're not talking about concealed carry weapons like a concealed carry knife or a gun. Obviously, something like this, if you use it in a fight, that's going to get you into a lot of trouble. On the other hand, in this pocket, I've got my cell phone. Might have a hard time proving that you bought that cell phone to hurt somebody. How about something besides a cell phone that we all carry every day? Keys. Now your keys might be organized in different ways. I've got a little keychain, he's got a big keychain. Different ways those might be used, and we'll talk about that. Also in this pocket, I've got a handful of change. Hey, mister. Change. You got change? Oh, um, sure. 85, 95, one dollar. Thanks, mister. Maybe you're a higher roller than just having a handful of change. Let me ask you, what's in your wallet? This could very well be used as a self-defense tool. Or how about a common adage, the pen is mightier than the sword. Now you see it, now you don't. And then it's back again. I mean, that could obviously be used as a surprise self-defense tool, right? The one thing that all these have in common is it can be used as a distraction. My keys, my wallet, my cell phone, my handful of change. I'm not gonna take pennies one at a time and throw it at the guy and hope that's gonna scare him away. I got a handful of change though, I could throw it at his face and that's gonna be enough of a distraction for me to maybe get out of there or pull out another self-defense tool. Uh, same thing can be used for my wallet or my keys instead of throwing it at him, especially at carjacking, he wants my car keys. Maybe I throw my car keys one direction and I run another direction. Karate Kid, uh, I think it was the second one where he went to Japan, somebody's trying to steal his wallet, so he drops his wallet, fakes like he's going to pick it up, and hits the guy in the twig and berries. Good distraction that led him into his combat tools. Oh, come on, man. It's all my money. No. All my money. <laughs> The thing about distractions is if I can use that in self-defense, nobody gets hurt, and that's usually the best self-defense is we can all get out of there safely. Keep in mind, this wallet could be a liability. If somebody's robbing you, they're either robbing you for your wallet or your cell phone. Why do they want the wallet? Well, because there's money and there's credit cards in there. So what if you didn't carry your credit card or your driver's license in the wallet, you kept those in another location like your pocket. Or maybe uh, you like to wear pretty dresses that don't have pockets, maybe putting it in your bra. That way if somebody wants to take your wallet, they're not really taking anything valuable. Or you may even just keep a dummy wallet in your purse so that when somebody's robbing, you can grab a wallet that really has nothing in it, give it to them and then get out of there. Maybe it's got certain things, we've talked about this in a lot of our self-defense classes, prepaid credit card instead of your regular credit card. A little bit of cash in there that you might use for spending on some small things. But if you give that wallet up, it's going to look like there's some valuables in there and really they didn't take you for everything. Now let's talk about how we can use each of these items as an improvised self-defense tool. And I'll start off by talking about the pen. Uh, a lot of places you'll see, they'll say, put the pen in the middle of your palm, wrap your fingers around it like you're going to use it as a punching dagger. And that can work pretty well, but the one thing that I'm feeling is this is digging right in the palm of my hand. And if I punched with any amount of force with that, yeah, it would penetrate, but it'd probably also hurt myself. And one thing they don't bring up is that you've got very sensitive nerves that run between your finger. And if that uh, pen gets pulled one way or another, that's painful in your hand. On the other hand, it's common to hold your pen in roughly this fashion. I just wrap my thumb around it, and now it's much more stable. I have my thumb holding it in place, and it's maybe a little less threatening. I don't want to hold it this way, 
Because again, he knows it's a weapon. If I have my arms crossed, it can kind of be hidden very easily under this arm. But main thing with this is I want to be striking soft tissues. I don't want to be going to the skull. The eyes could be a target, but what if he's wearing glasses? Anywhere I hit in the face is going to be hard. I might cause cuts, but generally what I'm going to be doing is things like the throat, the stomach. If he's grabbing me, I might stab the back of his hand or stab his forearm. He's got me from behind. I can use that to stab him in the leg. Now, this pen here specifically is a nice heavy wood pen. It's actually surprising how heavy this is. Something like this, or you see these pens that are made out of aluminum, they're very useful in this case, and it's not a tactical pen. Tactical pens, again, purchased for the purpose of hurting people. So if you use a tactical pen in self-defense, that could work against you in a court of law. So it's always better to improvise a separate tool. With that in mind, you can use a knife in a very similar way. If I open it up and use this end, this end was meant for hurting people. But what if I kept it closed up and I held it that same way and I used the icebreaker? Now, the icebreaker could cause serious damage, especially if you hit somebody in the skull. But if you're talking about those same soft points, like maybe to the eye, to the throat, even to the sternum, that would cause a lot of pain without having to actually kill the person. Somebody's grabbing a hold of you. Could you imagine hitting them in the back of the hand with that icebreaker? You're probably going to end up breaking their hand. You also notice as I'm holding it like this, some people will say, oh, hold it in your hand so it weights your hand and then throw a punch. They'll say the same thing about using change and having to roll quarters in your hand. Problem is, look at my fist and how flat this spot is when I have nothing in it. I'm trying to punch with these two knuckles on top. As soon as I wrap my hand around it this way, these knuckles are sticking out, which you don't want to hit with those knuckles. If I rotate my fist to get these knuckles pointing forward, look at the position of my wrist. I'm asking to get my wrist broken. So I would say with the knife, better to use it like that. Now, speaking of change, we had already spoken of in our hat video about how I can take these quarters, roll them up in a bandana, and now I can use that like a sack. So besides a distraction, it can be a he very heavy weighted, dense tool that I can use for smashing and bashing. Great thing about this, pretty much a non-lethal thing. Like the knife, anytime I whip that blade out, that's lethal force. So the change, a lot of times, if I wrap that up, that's the best way to use that weapon. And you can go back and take a look at that hat video. We show you how that works. Now, if you move on to something bigger, like for instance, a cell phone. One thing I'll point out is if you're going to use a cell phone as a self-defense tool, it might get broken. So probably better use uh, defensively for a cell phone is to use it to call 911. But if it is a bigger item like that, what you do is you just hold it in the center of your palm, hold it with your pinky and your thumb, then you can use it just like a palm strike to be able to hit very sensitive areas. Something like this wallet can be used the same way and actually you're not worried about breaking that wallet, especially if they're even asking you for your wallet, you can take it out. This is being held not in a fashion that looks like a weapon, but in a normal way I would hold my wallet. Especially if he was trying to hand me the wallet, right? Isn't that yeah. how he, then he really gives me the wallet? And of course you want to make sure that you're careful about what type of wallet you have. Like a flimsy cloth wallet, by the time you get credit cards and stuff in there can be pretty sturdy, but a nice heavyweight leather wallet can be much more effective. Now, old Burt Reynolds movie, Red Heat, he was a bodyguard in that movie. He actually took some of his credit cards and he sharpened one edge of it. Now, if you did that and you used it in a self-defense situation, you're probably going to jail for that. So again, we're not talking about making something into a weapon, but just improvising it as the weapon it already is. Which brings us to keys. Now, uh, you'll see some self-defense people, they'll tell you, oh, what you want to do is you want to lace the keys in between your fingers and use it like that. Well, it's the same thing we were talking about with the pen. This is going to be very painful on your hand. So what I would actually suggest is you use it the same way that you would with the wallet or the cell phone. You would support it in your hand, and then you'd leave the other end poking out like this, which... Isn't that how you normally use a key? In this case, I chose a house key because it's got a pointy stabby end and these saw teeth could definitely scrape or even cause cuts in the skin, especially if you hit something like the face that's like directly exposed to bone. 
Now, the difference with these keys is, number one, it has these heavy-duty car keys on it, which can actually be a little bit bigger, give me better penetration on my strikes. But what if this is my car key that I need to leave, and while I'm striking with it, I break it? There's a whole new problem there. The other thing that's different about these keys is I have them on the end of a lanyard. So if you watched our belt video or even our jacket video, it's the same thing. I can be holding it and then using it as strikes, distraction across the face. You know, any of this is not going to be pleasant. That could definitely take out somebody's eye. And again, it's just going to give me that moment of reaction from him where I can possibly get out of there or use a more serious technique. Another thing to bring up about keys, and even this wallet, it's got a little connection thing on it. They do make special self-defense tools for your keychains. Something like a keychain pepper spray. That could be very useful in a self-defense situation. Things like a, a keychain knife or a keychain knuckle duster. Those things, you have to check your state. They may not be legal in your state. Even if they are legal and you pull that keychain knuckle duster up and use it in a self-defense situation, you better have a pretty good story about why you had to use that knuckle duster or that knife that was already connected to your keychain. That's not an improvised weapon. That was something that could be proven that you bought it specifically to injure somebody. And then with that, if you have a uh, self-defense tool attached to your keychain, you might want to have it on a breakaway keychain. That way you can take that off and it's not connected to your keys that you may need to use to get out of, out of there to safety. Something like a quick release carabiner might be kind of handy for something like that. So what do you carry in your pocket? Is it different than something we have on this table? Maybe you have it and you're not quite sure how you would use it in the manner that we were talking about. Leave a comment down below and maybe we'll do a separate video. As with any skill, it takes practice and proper training to get good at it. So make sure you look for a good school in your area. If you're in Southern Oregon, contact us for our locations and times. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, like it and make sure to share that with a friend. Click the subscribe button and then hit that notification bell so you can catch our next exciting video.